Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Decode Dynasty. In this video, we are going to talk about Wireshark Labs. For this, you need to open your Chrome browser and type Jim Kuro's Wireshark Labs. You, know, you need to go to the first link We will be starting with IP, so I am opening the version 8. So basically, what is IP? IP stands for Internet Protocol. IP is a fundamental protocol in computer networks serving as the foundation of communication between devices on the internet. It operates at the network layer, that is the layer 3 of the OSI model and is responsible for routing packets of data so that they can travel across networks and arrive at the correct destination. The most commonly used versions are IPv4, that is the version 4, and the IPv6, that is version 6. ICMP is closely associated with IP and is used for error reporting, diagnostics, and network management. Common ICMP messages include ping, echo request, and echo reply. So, in this experiment, Let's do the following. First, we need to open our Wireshark and begin the packet capturing. So, I am opening my Wireshark and starting the packet capture. Next, we need to open our ping plot. This is my ping plotter and we need to type here address which is gaia.cs.umas.edu. Here I am going to st start. Packet capturing has already started. I am applying filter ICMP. Going to edit option. Changing the size of the packet to 2000. Clicking OK and again resuming. Now stopping. Again going to edit option. Changing the packet size to 23500. And again stopping. Now going back to Wireshark. Stopping the packet capturing. Here you can see ICMP packets. We have completed all the steps. Now moving towards the questions. First, select the first ICMP echo request message sent by your computer and expand the IP part of the packet in details window. What is the IP address of your computer? So basically it is asking the source address. Going to first packet. This is our source packet. You can also see from here, expanding the Internet Protocol version 4, the source is 172.16.57.99. Moving towards the next question, that is the second question. Within the IP packet header, what is the value of the upper layer protocol field? So here is our answer. Protocol ICMP1. Now, third question. How many bytes are in the IP, IP header? How many bytes are in the payload of the IP datagram? Explain how you de determine the number of payload bytes. First of all, we need to see the IP header. In the IP protocol version 4, 
you can see the header length that is of 20 bytes. Well, the total length is of 56 bytes. The payload is the total length minus the header length that is the 36 bytes. So our answer for the payload is 36 and answer for the header length is 20. Now, fourth question. Has this IP datagram been fragmented? Explain how you determine whether or not the datagram has been fragmented. Going to the Wireshark. Now, expanding, expanding the flags. Here you can see the more fragments. The more fragments is set, not set. So, the answer is our packet is not fragmented. Moving towards the fifth question. Which fields in the IP datagram always change from one datagram to the next within this series of ICMP messages sent by your computer? We have to see the fields which are not changed. If I compare the packet 1 and packet number 186 and 187, what I can observe? I can observe that the checksum, identification and time to live gets changed. For the packet 186, the identification is 0xAF13. The time to live is 255. And the checksum is 0xB1B9. For the 187 packet, the identification is 0xAF14. The time to live is 1. And the checksum is 0xAFB9. Moving towards the next question. Sixth. Which fields stay constant? Which of the fields must stay constant? Which fields must change and why? As we have already seen that checksum identification and TTL gets changed. So which of the fields are staying constant? Here you can compare both of the packets and you will get that the version and the header lens does not get changed. That is, they are the constant fields. The fields that must stay constant are header length, flags and the fragmentation offset. And the changing fields are identification, TTL and the checksum. Describe the pattern you see in the values in the identification field of the IP datagram. What packet pattern I can see? Here I need to compare the identification field of the IP datagrams. So one by one I'll explore all the packets starting with the packet 186. I can see the incrementing pattern. So the pattern I found is the incrementing pattern. Now next we have asked, find the series of ICMP TTL exceeded replies sent to your computer by the next first hope router. We need to see the TTL exceeded which is the packet number 188. The first TTL exceeded is packet number 188. What is the value in the identification field and the TTL field? The value in the identification field is 0x2d2d and the value in the TTL field is 254.
Do these values remain unchanged for all the ICMP TTL exceeded replies sent to your computer by the nearest router? Why? So we will observe the black color packets that is the time to live exceeded packets. By observing and comparing them, we get that identification fields are unchanged, but the TTL field is decrementing. Now, fragmentation. Sort the packet listing according to the time again by clicking on time column. So, we will sort it by clicking on time column. It will be sorted accordingly to the time. Question number 10. Find the first ICMP echo request packet that was sent by your computer after you changed the packet size in the pink plotter to be 2000. Has that message been fragmented across more than one IP datagram? For this, first we need to look the ICMP echo request message. I will clear this filter. Here I got my first fragmented packet. That is fragmented IP protocol and the packet number is 997. You will get your packet accordingly in your computers. Eleventh question. Print out the first fragment of the fragmented IP datagram. What information in the IP header indicates that the data fragment datagram being fragmented. What information in the IP header indicates whether this is the first fragment versus the later fragment? How long in this is this datagram? So here you can see is that packet number 997 and the is the first fragment whereas the packet number 998 is the second fragment. How can you tell that? Here the packet number 997 expanding the IP version 4 expanding then the flags here you can see the more fragments that is set to 1 so this means we are still having more fragments of this packet now moving towards the next packet here we have the value of more segments is not set that is the fragmentation is over so we have total the two fragments for including the packet 997 and 998. In the first packet you can see the version is 4, header length is 20 bytes and the identification is 0xB055. The more fragments is set and the time to live is 255. The protocol is ICMP1. The header checksum is 0x8ap3. Now in the next packet, you can see that the version is 4. Header length is 20 bytes. The total length is of 520 bytes. And the identification is 0xb055. The more fragments is not set. Time to live is 255. The protocol is ICMP1. And the header checksum is 0xadee. -E. In the first packet, you can see that the total length is of 1500. Whereas in the second packet, you can see the length is of 520 which means the total length is of 2000 including the header of 20 bytes. We have also seen the 12th question along with the 11th question. Now, 13th question. 
what fields change in the IP header between the first and the second fragment? The fields which are changed in the first and the second fragment, we need to find that. We will observe both of the fragments. What are the fields that are changed? So we can see that the flags are changed that is in the packet in the first fragment the more fragments is set and in the next fragment the more fragments is not set and rest all are same now similarly we have to do for 3500 packet first of all we need to find the fragments Here I have got my fragments. That is the packet number 1181, packet number 1182 and 1183. These three are the fragments. Fragment 1, fragment 2 and the fragment 3. As here you can see for the first fragment the total length is 1500. And for the second fragment the total length is again of 1500. And for the third fragment, the length is of 540. Now it is asked how many fragments were created from the original data graph. The fragment we have seen is total 3. So the answer is 3 fragments. What fields change in the IP header among the fragments? What are the fields that are changed? As you can see in the first fragment, the more fragments is set, that is the value 1. In the second fragment, the more fragments is set to 1. And in the third, it is don't fragment, that is which means that it is the last fragment. So this is the difference, this is the field that is changed. Otherwise, all the things that is time to live, protocol, header checksum, identification, header length, version, everything is same. So, we have complete, completed this document and this was still here about the video. Thanks for watching.